Jay, how would you describe this place? It's honky tonk, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm here on a very special mission. This is to experience my very first Calgary Stampede. If you guys don't know what that is, I'll explain all through the course of this video because I don't know either. From my initial interpretation is at part Coachella, part rodeo, and part state fair. Oh, and no. Jay, my local connect, do, can I call you Calgarian? 100%. Calgarian. What, is that, is that far off from my, my expectations? It is the greatest outdoor show on earth. It's rodeo, food, bands, live music, party, dancing, all of it. And I also get to see tonight, I'm hoping, one of my childhood athletic heroes perform, which I never thought I'd have time to do. Also, I should introduce the man behind the lens, Tyler Cave, you We're guys back. know him. We're back. Back again. Tyler, have you been here before? I've been here when I was 12, but now I'm 31, and it's time to have a whole new experience. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. All right, I have no idea what to expect. Calgary Stampede 2023, let's go. You! Let's go, baby! Yeah! <laughs> All right, first things first, before we get started on the day, Jay, where are we going? We are at Market Mall right now. They do a yearly stampede breakfast. This is a Calgary Staples. All over the city throughout the entire stampede week, every day of the week, there's somebody who's doing a free stampede breakfast. So you can roll up with your family, with your friends, whatever. Hop in line, they'll give you, see? Pancakes, sausages, there's like coffee lines, there's roping for kids, and you go check out the fire trucks. We were walking into a scene of thousands of people waiting for a pancake breakfast. This is the tradition here at the Calgary Stampede. All right, as we wait in line, I have a very special guest here that came to meet us. He already has his pancakes, but this is Davey Gravy, and he reviews all of the pancakes at the Stampede. Is that correct? That's correct. I've been to 15, 15 breakfasts so far. Just this week alone? Just this week alone. And what's the plan? What's the goal? How many do you want to get to? Ideally, ideally I can have maybe 20. Okay, that's pretty aggressive, I love that. And what's the background behind the Calgary Stampede Pancake Breakfast? So Jack Morton put on the first Stampede Breakfast 100 years ago on Stephen Avenue as like a marketing campaign to bring people to the chuck wagon races. Ah, and it still stands today. And it still stands today. All right, here we go. Moment of truth, Calgary Stampede Pancake Breakfast. We waited in line for probably a half hour, actually it wasn't too bad. Wow. That's all you need to start today. Great start. Yeah. Pancake breakfast. Check. Now, we gotta get suited up. I mean, this outfit isn't gonna fly. No. At the stampede, so we have a few people to see before we get into the rodeo. All right, first stop. We gotta come over to, Jay, where are we going? Smith Built Hats. Smith Built Hats. This is where we get our traditional cowboy hats for the rodeo. We don't look to park just yet. I just got my baseball hat on, I got my sneakers on, but we're about to change that. Smith Built Hats, first stop. Let's go. As the story goes, Morris Schumiatcher was only 18 years old in 1910 when he convinced his father to move their large family to Canada from Russia. In the new country, they were renamed Smith. And soon enough, Morris Smith was able to take out a loan from a local bank to purchase the Calgary Hat Works. Fast forward over a hundred years and Smith Built Hats is still going strong. Thanks in large part to the success that the Calgary Stampede has had in popularizing Western wear. Today, Kyle takes us through the intricate process of molding each hat, which includes the same hydraulic press that they've been using for a century. From here, we meet Holly to size our caps and choose a color. That feels nice. Can you take a look at that color? Oh yeah, I feel like Pharrell in this hat with it, how high it is. We're gonna shape it, don't worry. I love it. Then it's over to Cody to shape these beauties. How long have you been doing this for? Uh, I've been here six and a half years. How many did you get? Lastly, you gotta pick out a custom hat band and pull the whole yeah, thing together. Now, these girls don't work here, but you get the idea. Well, that's nice. It's very, like, subtle. I like the subtle. That's nice. I, like I think that. this is the one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh -wee. Step number one in the books. Complete. The boys are fully fitted with caps. 
and we are now ready for step number two. We got one more stop before we get into the stampede itself, and this is Alberta Boot Company. It's been around since 1978. It's an absolute classic. Buy a pair, have it for life. These are the most beautiful boots you can buy. We got the hats. Now it's time to cover our feet. Alberta Boot. Here we go. And here I was told that you were the person to see. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm the best Sydney. intro ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sydney. Sid, you're our connect for the boots. Though, I right? am, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm a stampede virgin. Okay. And a boot virgin. All right, awesome. So if you were gonna take my boot virginity, yes. What should we where should we go and what should we start with? Alright, so it kind of depends on what look you're going for. Okay. We've got these square toes here. This is kind of like our workers' farmers guy look. Okay. And then we also have these ones here. This is your very traditional, I've lived in Calgary forever, I know boots kind of look. Oh, okay. And then we've also got some more fancy dressed up things because we get our guys that live in downtown and they come and they've got their suits, but they still wear boots every day to work. Okay, let's say, yeah. so how about a guy that, you know, doesn't spend a lot of time on the farm, mm -hmm. but, you know, he loves the idea of it, but he yeah. also... He doesn't want his feet sore all the time, and, yeah. but he also wants to look like a man. So these boots have been kind of like our perfect in between. What's your preference? You like the you like the pointed? I really do like the pointed, to be honest. I do like the traditional aspects. Um, <laughs> right. And how about do shoes and hat need to match? Because I don't know if you saw this, but I just got a brand new hat. You probably thought I've had it my whole life, huh? Yeah, no, it's it looks new. great. <laughs> do your um, shoes and your hat need to match? No, but do you know what I do find more people think do need to match is belt and boots. The belt and boots, they're like, that needs to match. Hat, they don't seem to bother as much. Let's do this. You, looks like you need a new belt, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll start with the boots, then we'll get the belt. Yeah, no worries. These are the tightest pants. Right? These, these are Canadian yeah. pants. I, I brought these pants just because I was coming to Canada. They're, they're tighter than I normally wear. The one time I wear a, a tight pant. So you don't want them to be comfortable, Sid so said. The, the signs of a good boot is they feel terrible. That's what I'm learning. There you go. Ooh. That's perfect. What you wanted? Just a little. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that sounded nice. Which one should I go with? Guys, in the comments, let me know. Yeah. I just can't. Tomorrow I'm gonna stop though. We're ready to roll. We got our boots, we got our hats. It's rodeo. All right, next up is the main event. We just got here to the Stampede Grounds. This is where the rodeo is about to kick off and people are filling in. Everyone is excited. He's from California. <laughs> yeah. How do you know? I thought the hat would let me blend in a little bit. Shh, don't tell anybody. So we just got to the grounds. We're gonna see a little bit behind the scenes later, but first we're gonna go up to our seats because the magic is about to start and this place is electric. There is no place in the world like Calgary Stampede. Just look at this crowd right here, just look at this. The rodeo is the anchor, the foundation that ties this whole 10 day festival together. Dating all the way back to 1912 when American promoter Guy Whedon organized the first one. And it's continued almost every July since. Today, the Stampede attracts over a million visitors, making this one of the largest rodeos in the world. If you're into the Western way of life, they put on a hell of a show. Yeah! Now, our seats are just fine, but sometimes, every now and then, when you're making YouTube videos, you're able to get some <laughs> special access. And in this case, it's an invitation to go back behind the scenes as the bull riders get ready to perform. Here we go. This is crazy. This is literally the coolest thing ever. <laughs> We're literally behind the scenes now. Here are all the bulls. Fully in the action. Now let me tell you, there's very little on this earth more emasculating than trying to explain to a professional bull rider that you're just there to vlog. Nevertheless, it's wild to see them work from this perspective. Meanwhile, across the stampede grounds, 
in my opinion, one of the coolest aspects of this whole thing are the Five Nations of Treaty 7, who set up camp along the bank of the Elbow River. And I have a chance to meet up with Amber Bigplume to learn more. Next up on our mission across the stampede, we run into Amber over at, what area are we in? Where, where are we? We are at the Elbow River Camp at the Calgary Stampede. Indigenous communities have been a part of the Calgary Stampede since 1912, correct? From the very first stampede, it, they have established a relationship. Uh -huh. Guy Wiedicht made sure that it was very important to have a show that showcased all of the amazing indigenous culture yeah. that surrounded Calgary. However, in 1912, indigenous people were not allowed off of their reserve unless they had a pass given to them by the government. So the Calgary Stampede was the one time, 10 days out of the year, that they were able to leave their community without that government pass. And that's why the relationship is so strong within the five communities within Treaty 7 and the Calgary Stampede. First Nation communities of Southern Alberta, predominantly led by the Blackfoot people, set up traditional teepees, organize powwows, offer arts and crafts, and share elements of their traditional lifestyle. It's incredible that they're so well represented here. And honestly, I think this is the only way to have a real and true appreciation of this land's heritage. These people have fought incredible adversity, and they deserve every bit of recognition they receive. Honestly, I wish more festivals in the U.S. did this as well. All right, next up, it's time for lunch. And we're fitted out with some Calgary Stampede aprons because this is going to be aggressive. We're going to go try some of the weirdest, most fun, different food items here at the Stampede. We're in the Midway section. This is where the entire lineup, it is a huge, sprawling strip of food and gluttony from ice cream to burgers to pickled pizza and everything in between. And we're with a crew that's gonna guide us around and try to eat as much of this as possible. It's gonna be aggressive, but I'm ready. All right, we're inside Nashville North and I'm alongside Rick. Rick has one of the most hyped up dishes in the Calgary Stampede, and that is the $100 hot dog. Rick, what the heck makes this a $100 hot dog? We start out with a ciabatta bun which is infused with sun-dried tomatoes and red peppers. And then what we do is we put a bed of uh, Bunderfleisch that we air dry ourselves for about six months. After that, we take some elk meat and some Wagyu and we infuse it with the 2010 La Coya Cabernet Sauvignon. We infuse it with some cheese, we mix it, then we stuff it. And then we top it with uh, sauerkraut, which is imported from Germany. We've got some onions, we've got some banana peppers and some melted cheese on top. Elk meat and Wagyu. And I got this beautiful sauerkraut on top. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh. Listen, all the accoutrements are great, but man, that sausage, without a doubt, is a star. And rightfully so, Rick runs a sausage company here in Calgary. So you have beautiful, beautiful sausage. Thank you. <laughs> From here, we went through the gauntlet of interesting dishes across the Midway. From deep fried pickle bows and habanero cherry ice cream tacos with pop rocks, to elkaroni pizza and very weird ice cream flavors. If you want to see more from this full-on festival food tour, you can watch the entire food episode over at Gareth Eats, including my reaction to this ketchup and mustard ice cream. In the meantime, I'll let Tyler provide a much more positive and diplomatic review of this ambitious creation. Okay, so I love ketchup. Probably one of my favorite toppings of anything. Weird, but now this is my dream to try ketchup ice cream. Yeah. Oh my God. That's Heinz. It's gotta be Heinz. I probably wouldn't order this as like a first choice, but if there was like a choice between like, you know, maybe a few ice creams like chocolate vanilla, uh -huh. I'd probably go with the ketchup. Not gonna lie, it's not bad. Alright, we've covered the rodeo, culture, and food aspects of the stampede, but Jay tells me the experience would not be complete without diving into the bona fide party and music scene. And located directly at the heart of the stampede fairgrounds is Nashville North, an all-day, all-night concert venue 
Cowboys can go to get loose. This is Nashville North, the official party tent of the Stampede. Jay, where are we? It's heaven, baby. It's heaven on earth. Well, and I punched out at 5 p.m. Too damn tired to drive home again. I found the strength to get to the bar. Crack a cold beer sitting in my car. North and Jay was hyping this up the whole time. Lived up and surpassed the chaos that this place is. I mean, it's just pandemonium. The band hasn't even started yet. All right, we gotta move on. I can't stand here too long, or else I don't know what'll happen. We gotta go. And this evening, <laughs> I get to fulfill a childhood dream: seeing one of my favorite basketball players perform. I've been waiting for many years for this, and tonight I get my chance. I didn't think it'd be here at the Calgary Stampede, but it's happening. Childhood dream. Let's do this. Tyler's gonna witness. It's gonna be gonna be throwing up threes. I can't believe I'm gonna see one of the all-time greats perform. We're going inside the Big Four Roadhouse for the show. Whew. Let me give you a quick rundown of the concert setup before the big fella goes live. There's four different stages inside the Stampede grounds, including the iconic Saddle Dome. And the music here is as diverse as the crowd. From Pitbull in Alabama to Lil Yachty and Charlie Crockett, they really got somebody for everybody. I mean, this is why it's often referred to as Coachella. But for me, there was one name that stood tall above the rest when I was going through the lineup. Now, I always knew him as four-time NBA champion Shaquille O'Neal, but here, he's DJ Diesel. without getting the mini donuts. No chance. This is the acclaimed item here. Best late night food after a full on experience at the Calgary Stampede. We, I can't, I, you know, you saw the video so I don't have to give you a rundown of what we did. But if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out Jay. Huge shout out to Tyler behind the lens of all this excitement. And let's finish off with a mini donut. Cheers. Man. Oh. <laughs> Cheers! The good times. Oh. If you've never experienced a Calgary Stampede, I highly recommend it. Yeah. If not, for the mini donuts alone. Tyler, you want one? Yes, please. You're gonna love that. Alright, you guys, make sure you stay tuned next week because we are diving deeper into the world of cowboys here in Canada. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Until next time, travel deeper. What am I doing? So who got hats here? Oprah, Kevin Costner, Robert Duvall, Will and Kate when they were here. My personal favorite, because he bought uh, four of my hats um, that I had designed, uh, was Usher. Usher? Yeah. No, so. He's noted cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go. We gotta get things. Let's go. Come on.
a rare shirt. Behind the scenes. Look at this. Look at this guy. Are we brothers? <laughs> wow, you guys are good. How many Smurfs yeah. had to die for these boots? I know, right? I've seen guys that are like, I like the square toes. They look more masculine to me. Oh. I find pointed toes to be feminine, which some of the younger guys are kind of leaning towards the square toes for Not the like there's anything wrong with that. Exactly. No, definitely not. Here we go. Calgary Stampede. Now can officially start that we got ourselves some custom hats. Oh man, I've never felt so sexy in my life. I'm feeling good. Look at how good these guys Ooh, look. This is great. Oh, looks shines in the light. Bro, okay, driving. good. Hurry. Saddle up. Three, two, one. Boosh. 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 How's that? 